Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. When visiting Phoenix in January before COVID, I picked up a slice of olive wood trunk and uh, brought it home and rough turned it and then now recently finished it. The uh, wood was interesting because I think it was more of a horizontal branch of the tree because the pith or the heartwood was more offset there was a lot more sapwood down here which would tend to be on the underside of a branch. I think this face utilizes that to pull that off, pull the heartwood figure off to the side and have sapwood more on the other side for a nice contrast to the olive wood. I hollowed it when I rough turned it but probably not enough because I let it dry and it was a lot more work to hollow it later on when it was dry. So, but for now let's go ahead and turn this nice vase out of olive wood. I brought this olive wood back from Phoenix, Arizona in January 2020 and rough turned shortly thereafter. This is an entire slice of a trunk, although the pith is more to one side. It might have been a large limb. It is not perfect wood. From similar slices, there will be defects. I decided to try to turn it without completely removing the pith and see what happens. For now, it is mounted between centers and is very off balance. I'm starting with my large bowl gouge. As I progress, the wood stalls several times on smaller step type drive center. Although I retighten the live center several times, the drive center bores into the green wood. Finally, I cannot seem to get it to hold much at all. I take the wood off and clean the spurs of the drive center and let them grab again. A larger spur center would have been better. Still, I like the step type center. Cleaning the spurs was not too high of a price to pay. There is a lot of sapwood that I want to get rid of. Then cut a tenon on the headstock end. A choice based on my view of the wood. Now mounted securely, I hope, in the chuck, I can shape the wood into a vase shape. I am still using my large wool gouge. As I approach the desired shape, I change my cut more frequently to a shear cut to home in on the shape that I want. What shape is that? Well, I will know it when I see it. Here's where I should have at least rough hollowed the vase, but I decided to drill out the center with a large Forstner bit, one larger than my Jacobs chuck so that the bit can go as deep as possible. Drilling goes fairly easily, but I will pay later for not hollowing more while the wood is still green and soft. I coated the green vase with PVA-based greenwood sealer from Craft Supplies, then periodically weighed the vase over the next 17 months. It lost 24% of its weight in that time. I do not know how long it had been down before I got it. Now it is dry, but both ends have distorted with the warping. There are a couple of nasty splits. I will have to see what comes of them in the end. For now, I loosely mount it to a chuck with the cone center on the mouth side to center it as best I can. Then cinch down the chuck. I'm cutting a quick tenon around the mouth, but what I really need is a clean tenon on the base. 
To get the base tenon, I will have to flip it around on the mouth tenon to trim the base tenon. Whew, it survived. Now I want to remove the sealer, remove the warp distortions, and refine the exterior shape. Since I did not hollow it very much, I have plenty of wood to shape with. Actually, too much. This also gives me a good area for the steady rest wheels to run on. On to hollowing. I have regretted not hollowing it while it was green. This is now hard, tough wood. I mount the steady rest and my deep hollowing rig. The deep hollowing rig is a captured bar system that Southern Utah Woodturners gave me. There are a com commercial equivalents. I have used both laser and camera edge siding methods. I'm now preferring the camera system slightly, since I can see the whole piece of wood and not solely a red dot but this does not show up well for you to see. I have a screen on front of my lathe with a transparency taped over it. I have outlined the cutter with a black sharpie. The red is a previous project marking. Then off I go. As I approach deeply hollowed, I pay more attention to smoothing out the walls, feeling for any bumps that I need to cut out. With as gnarly as this wood is, I'm not trying for a super thin wall. Half inch plus will be fine. I spend a lot of time cleaning shavings out of the interior. With hollowing complete, I keep the steady in place while I trim back the neck with a spindle gouge. Even then, I try to keep the cutting pressure parallel with the turning axis back into the chuck. Then I can remove the steady rest and use a faceplate on the life center to steady the top of the vase. Since I'm close to final shape, these are mostly shear cuts to not remove too much wood. This is followed by a very thorough sanding up through 400 grit. Finally, I can apply walnut oil to bring out the grain. The harder part is to oil the inside since I cannot reach in. This olive vase has been a year and a half in the turning. However, my patience is now rewarded with a beautiful olive figure. Most of the typical olive grain look is on one side due to the pith offset, but better there than hidden in the middle and hollowed out. I just have to say that patience is hard to come by. How is your patience factor coming?
please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video and add it to my website. Please wear your full face shield for safety anytime the lathe is running. I will see you next week with another wood turning video. But meanwhile, take time to count your blessings.